Let's talk about shields for spaceships. Shields are the go-to form of defense for most space science fiction. Shields offer quite a few advantages compared to armor or structure tanking, and the real-life science of many shield concepts is very doable. I predict that shields for spacecraft will definitely be a thing for us in the future. But geeks and sci-fi communities are understandably somewhat confused about the nature of shields. In Star Wars and Star Trek especially, shields are used quite a bit, as well as almost every space game that has space combat. So let's talk about types of shields and how they work, especially in Star Wars and Star Trek. So for almost all of sci-fi, there are two types of shields, the deflector shield and the energy shield. A deflector shield deflects physical objects from impacting the spaceship through some form of space jujitsu. An energy shield, rather than deflecting, acts as a barrier that may absorb impacts or cause objects to be destroyed upon impact. And sometimes you have a shield that can do both. Space does have dust particles, rocks, and even space junk, which is a problem in Earth's orbit now, by the way, as well as high energy particles and harmful radiation so shields are a very practical thing to have in space travel. And through some research, I've concluded that pretty much all of this shielding is very viable even using today's science. But speaking of science and learning in general, I have bitten the bullet and very selectively decided to go ahead and take on a sponsor, and I couldn't have hoped for a better one. Brilliant.org is who I've gone with, knowing full well that you geeks won't mind them at all. With Brilliant, you can learn interactively through a number of dynamic puzzles that activate your problem-solving skills. There are a number of courses about math, science, and computer science that can be six times more effective than lectures. I myself have begun a lesson on special relativity, something that will surely help me to talk more intelligently about spaceships in the future. Brilliant has lots of great courses for all ability and knowledge levels, so you'll find something that interests you. Master all sorts of technical subjects with topics ranging from 3D geometry to astrophysics to quantum computing. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with the special offer just for you guys. Head to the link in the description below to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 of you to sign up will also get 20% off of an annual membership. And now back to Spaceship Shields. Our planet, because of its molten iron core, has a magnetic field around it that protects us from solar winds and high energy particles from the sun. And you can see this working near the poles as the magnetic fields move these particles. We can see plasma to our eyes in the form of a glow we call aurora borealis. A magnetic field is the most basic type of energy shield, but it is also a deflector as it deflects certain high energy particles. Not so much for physical objects such as asteroids though. However, a strong magnetic field can move and manipulate plasma, so if some Romulan is shooting your ship with plasma-based weapons, a magnetic shield is the best counter. Which leads us to a step up from the magnetic shield, which would be the plasma shield. By manipulating super hot plasma with magnetic fields, you can start to project the plasma as an energy barrier. If your plasma is strong, it can vaporize objects upon impact, of course, Plasma is also very hot, so this can be dangerous for your spacecraft, but recent studies have shown that you can fall back on magnetic fields to dissipate heat as well. So with this setup, a good starship might have a basic magnetic field which protects it from radiation, another barrier of plasma also manipulated by magnetic fields, and then a closer layer of magnetic shielding near the hull that dissipates heat. This approach is already a feature of tokamak fusion reactors, which manipulate hot plasma with magnetic fields to attempt to achieve fusion ignition. Now, depending on the energy of the approaching object or weapon, a plasma shield may not stop or destroy the incoming, but a plasma shield could also be considered a deflector if your shield is smart enough to simply nudge the incoming object in a way that diverts its trajectory. How about the shield for defense against lasers? You'd think that a plasma shield will not stop a good laser. A magnetic field cannot, and a plasma barrier might, but you need something either opaque or highly refractive to diffuse the light of a laser. So if we are sticking to known science, this might be a better job for your ship's armor. Star Wars has something called a ray shield, which is designed to stop laser-based weapons, but 
cannot stop physical objects such as proton torpedoes. There actually may be a way, according to known science, to manipulate gases or possibly plasma into a type of lens which could refract most laser light. This can be done most easily in an atmosphere using a laser. This has been proposed using a device called an LDAO, or Laser Developed Atmospheric Lens. This is basically the same as creating a mirage or light refracting heat waves through artificial means. For space, I suspect plasma could do the same job as plasma is ionized gas and only requires magnetic fields to shape it. So there again, a plasma shield could theoretically defend against lasers. So why then, especially in sci-fi, must we make the distinction between deflector shields and other shields, since it seems that you could pretty much do it all with a plasma shield? This leads into the tactical applications of these various types of shield. A shield's effectiveness would depend on the incoming weapon and damage type quite a bit, wouldn't it? For example, a laser might go right through some plasma shields that are not tuned for light refraction, but able to easily deal with objects such as missiles or bullets. By the same token, a shield that refracts light energy would be useless against incoming objects. And then even a deflector shield via the smart use of plasma may not be fast acting enough to deal with a highly massive projectile traveling at very high velocities, such as a railgun projectile. Furthermore, I think a lot of sci-fi makes the mistake of thinking of a shield as an invisible wall or barrier that has to be beat down before your ships take any damage, but more likely your shield will be fully powered and some damage types will get through anyway. Now depending on how good your tech is to tune your shields in the heat of battle, they may take a bit to adapt to whatever is shooting at them. This might be a great explanation of why sometimes in Star Trek, even when the shields are up, the ships seem to still take damage as there is something of a bleed through effect. In Star Wars, we have a similar situation. Likely there are two types of shield projector, one for deflector shields, and one for ray or energy shields. It also probably really helps if your ship has a stellar threat detection system so that the shields have time to be calibrated for an effective defense, all of which is accomplished with sensors, software, and fast-acting energy tuning. I kind of like how the game EVE Online breaks this up, as do some other games. There are different types of damage, such as EM, which would be laser-based weapons, kinetic, which would be things like rail guns or conventional guns, thermal, which is heat, and explosive, which makes fires and perhaps plasma as well. Some shields have various buffs and boosts to resist certain weapons, and sometimes armor resists things like oh, lasers much more effectively than shields would. So what about that? Is armor better than shields? Well, here are the advantages of shields. First, shields can be recharged as long as you have the power to do so. Armor normally cannot be rebuilt while in combat. Second, shields are adaptable to different types of weapons if you have the technology to adapt them, especially during combat. Third, shields do not weigh your ship down in the same way armor would. And fourth, shields free up the architecture of your spacecraft so that you do not have to put in as much structural defense. A ship that relies on shield taking can look weak and flimsy like many ships do in Star Trek, but this doesn't matter much if the shield tech is good. Now we could go on and on about shield science, tactics, and how they are used, but that is what the comments section is for. So please feel free to comment below and put in your two cents about shields. Until next time, space friends.